Hello everyone. Recently ebuyer.com got in touch with me and asked if I would be willing to review two products in their Element Gaming range. So they have kindly sent me to review uh, the Beryllium Mechanical Keyboard from their Element Gaming range and the name 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 right in front of me. Xenon 700 Elite Gaming Headset. So to start off with, I am going to film this as a sort of unboxing video before I get into the proper review stage of things. Um, and I'll give my first impressions and as the video goes on, some more hopefully concise thoughts. So to start off with, I have unboxed the Beryllium Mechanical Keyboard. Now, I actually don't know a lot about mechanical keyboards, but I've looked a little bit online uh, just to find out more general information on mechanical keyboards and in particular this one. Um, I've always actually just made do with a cheap keyboard from the supermarket, so this is going to be a little bit interesting to find out what it's like to have an actual gaming keyboard. Um, I'll read out what it says in the back. Uh, one thing I do want to know is that from things that I've read online, it says that this has red switches. It is not the Cherry MX uh, switches that you can get on mechanical keyboards. One thing as a Let's Player I've always been wary about mechanical keyboards for is basically the noise as I use the switches that will pick up during recordings, but this is par for the course with mechanical keyboards. I just know the Cherry MXs tend to just be a little bit quieter than your standard ones. So it says here on the back of this, every trade has its essential tills and PC gaming is no different. Um, basically packed full of features to help you up your gaming efficiency and make every keystroke count. Uh, so it comes with a removal, removal wrist support. I would say removable. Maybe my English is bad, but yes, have that right here. And alternate switches for the WASD, which I almost like let's put on here. Uh, they are blue, because you know, fancy. But I'll plug it in and I'll show more on that in a second in this video. And here we have the Xenon 700 wired USB headset. In particular, I'm looking forward to trying out the microphone in this because while I will always primarily use the Rode Podcaster microphone for my gaming videos on my PC, if there are times where I might, you know, not be at home but I'll have my laptop and um, just elsewhere and I want to record a video, I want to see if this headset in itself would be able to stand basically making videos and audio quality that I would approve of, failing that at, you know, just be decent enough for using on Skype, TeamSpeak, Discord, stuff like that. So it's been around a week since I filmed the unboxing type videos and in this past week I've tried to use both these products as much as possible, the headset and the keyboard. And me being me, you know, I like to consider myself a thorough tester. I like to, you know, have my tea at my computer and, you know, spell it everywhere because me and let's just say I have spilled a couple of things on this keyboard. Um, mostly Chinese food, but it, it's, you know, it's all clean now, I hope, because I'm going to be showing it off. And I have a couple of comments with regards to more of the headset than the, the, the keyboard. Um, so I'm wearing a headset right now, obviously, uh, and I have it switched on so you can see it's switching different colors which i think is quite cool you actually can turn it off with this little thing here i need to sort my cable management of this a little bit better but um you can turn it off hello i think it was cool on you can't really see it because of the lighting in here right now unfortunately um i mean it's vaguely there yeah the only thing that i've noticed when it comes to this headset is and i have actually looked at others reviews of it just to see if it might just be an issue isolated to me because you know i think i have big ears <laughs> and you know i've not seen anyone else say this but uh, um i found that it gets uncomfortable in my ears after a little while maybe around two or three hours of wearing the headset granted that is two or three hours of wearing this straight uh while gaming which probably isn't like the best idea because you know you're supposed to technically if we all read the manuals of, you know, games, we're supposed to, you know, get up every 15 minutes and stretch our legs. Yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, so I will say there's a little bit of uncomfortableness with me wearing this just now. Uh, I'm also recording this with the headset microphone, ideally if I have everything set up correctly. So that allows you to gauge whether you think that the audio quality is good enough for you or not. I will say I am very unlikely to use the microphone for things like video making or anything like this solely because I have the Rode Podcaster and I don't think the quality is that great for me when I can always get alternatives such as the Blue Snowball that I have used for a while. But for things like Skype, TeamSpeak, Discord, I find that using the headset just sort of works instead of, you know, grabbing the microphone up here and have it having it sat in front of my 
um, face. <laughs> so for things like this, yeah, it, it makes do, it does. Um, quality wise, sound quality, I'm not particularly that great at noticing things like this. Whoa, hi, video, stay focused. Um, it does sound good to me. I actually didn't install the drivers properly because you can actually just plug this and go and it works fine. But I did end up looking online for the Windows 10 drivers. It does come with a disc, this headset. Uh, unfortunately, my case doesn't have like a CD part, which, you know, I think those are mostly redundant anyway when I can look for things online like drivers. But yeah, once I actually got the drivers installed, you do have software where you can adjust things. Let me get it open. Um, ooh, okay. Yeah, so I read online that you should actually be able to have certain voice effects when it comes to the microphone. I haven't noticed these. I've only noticed microphone in, volume control and stuff like this, which, you know, is fine, but I can always sort of do that with Windows default things. And I feel like I'd be able to, with Windows default, I feel like I have a constant way to adjust it rather than using the gaming headset thing, which again, I tend to only use this for Skype and stuff anyway. Um... But yeah, once I installed the drivers, I felt like audio quality wise that I, what I was listening back, things actually sounded a little bit better, like things sounded deeper, they weren't just sort of, I wouldn't say they were tinny, they just felt, right off the bat, it just felt fine. But I'm really, I'm actually really happy with this as a headset, like the only other headset I've owned before, I mean I've mostly made do with basically the Apple uh, earbuds or a really cheap sort of headset that I got from Amazon it was like 10 pounds or something like this so this is my first proper gaming headset and I'm hoping that it'll last me quite a while um and I am I am liking it the uncomfortable thing again I think that may just be isolated to me because other reviews that I've read haven't had that issue but it is something to note that you know after a couple of hours there is a little bit of a pain there and again it's up to you to gauge whether what you think of the audio quality as for the keyboard I've noticed when I've been recording, it's a mechanical keyboard, so it is going to pick up a lot of noise as I'm typing. And let me say, I type like 112 words per minute. So particularly when I have been on Alexa Skype and stuff like this, and I've been using the Rode Podcaster, and it picks up the sounds of my keyboard. If I am typing something to someone, it annoys the other person so much because it's just this constant. <laughs> and I know that it's picking up in videos as well. Um, it's not too bad because, again, when I'm playing games, it's not as if I'm typing this constant stream of things. I'm, I don't really tend to play MMORPGs or anything in talking chats. I tend to just use, like, WASD and basically there's a certain short keys that you would use for games. Um, what I do like, actually, and let's hope that this will show off. So I have it just now where it's backlit. Now, you can actually customise this so that it can... It's certain different modes, right? I think I, I talked about that in the uh, unboxing video. When I'm feeling particularly typey, I do like to switch it to this mode. Let's see, if you hold Alt, no, 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 not Alt, FN, F12. Is this the right one? Not that one, not that one. Oh my God, where'd it go? Okay, so you notice that as I press certain buttons, it'll light up under it, yeah. It just makes me feel so satisfied when I'm feeling particularly typey, just to see everything light up as I'm typing. So I quite like that mode, but um, I do tend to leave it as just constantly backlit because, you know, I think we've all had those gaming sessions where we have spent hours and hours and the sun goes down and you don't have any lights on and you just sort of need to look down at your keyboard every so often. I mean, I'm a touch typist. I don't really need to look at a keyboard that often, but, you know, it's nice to have it just be constantly backlit for when the lights go down and I'm like, hmm, oh, what button's this again? So, overall, I really like these products. Um, I think definitely for an intro into gaming products like this, specialised gaming products like this, particularly where I have came from, again, budget, whatever I could make do with, they are good products. Durability-wise, I do hope that they will last. Unfortunately, I've only tested this out for a week, so it's not like I can give my completely full thoughts on how well and how cost effective it is going to be in the long run because one thing I'm really concerned about with products is I am someone who admittedly does not have a lot of money. So it's easy to see products like this that are entry level and think, awesome, I accidentally hit the stop button mid-record. Anyway, it's easy to 
look at entry level products like this and think, awesome, okay, I can finally get into the whole sort of gaming side of things. I have specialized gaming products. But it's not going to be much use if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of money and find that you may need to replace it a couple of months down the line because it all adds up. And that's why people tend to look at high, higher end products because they tend to, at least the assumption is, if you're going to spend a lot of money on something, that they might last longer. So what I will do is, we'll say maybe about a few months down the line, I will actually do a follow-up in the description box, maybe even make a follow-up video giving my full, complete thoughts once I feel like I have fully tested this stuff out. But for now, I am happy with these products. So I don't think I've had any issues. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head whether I've actually had any issues with the keyboard. Um, You will see that I actually switched over the keys as well when I, when I held it up. I switched over the black keys to have like the, the blue keys for the WESD and the arrow keys. But yeah, like I said, I don't think I've had any issues other than it's a mechanical keyboard. It does tend to be a little bit loud, but that's just part of the draw. Like I think the only keyboard, mechanical keyboard off the top of my head, it tends to have a little bit more silent as uh, clicking, tapping, yeah, tapping tends to be with the Cherry MX line. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. And I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see y'all next time.